Part two, skull corpsing, detailing, and hair application. What is going on, guys? Glad you can make it here for the next episode. So you're looking at this table going, my gosh, he's got a mess of things going on. Well, reason being is I want to catch everybody back up to speed in case there's somebody that didn't make the uh, cross tutorial that we put out a month ago. Just wanted to set everything out because everything we're going to be using tonight is pretty much the same steps and process that we use to create that skull cross guy. Uh, again, so if you're just joining us for the first time tonight, good evening. My name is Paul. Welcome to my prop shop. We're going to start here. So last video, in case you missed it, uh, we casted this number six open mouth two-part rigid foam skull. Came out pretty cool, pretty detailed, but we're going to make them even more detailed. So let's start with everything first. Um, again, like I mentioned, this is pretty, pretty much everything that we had the first go around, but let's just start. So Again, we use mask latex. Now, mask latex is something that I use. I don't use glue or paper towels. I prefer mask latex. It creates a great skin, both for the base skin, intermediate, and then the finish off. Uh, because remember, we do three passes of latex, each one building upon the, the, you know, the layer before. Always have a can of black flat spray paint. Remember, I frost everything in black once we're done just to get that depth and that base color or recesses going. You're gonna need a dark color stain. It can be espresso, mahogany, whatever you feel. Again, this is what's gonna be into the crevices of all those cracks and the bones and things like that. Grab you a can of any equivalent 3M uh, adhesive spray. This is what we're gonna use. Once we get the final layer of uh, latex going, we're gonna spot check him with spray adhesive, tap it with the cotton balls, and then we're gonna apply more latex on it. You wanna make sure that you have your heat gun. Now your heat gun is what I use to kind of pre-dry those layers again because these layers are so thin it doesn't take much. Uh, you know, you don't want this thing sitting out for an hour or two trying to get this done. We're gonna express the heat. We're gonna get this thing done quickly. Before we get any further, let's talk about this guy and everything that needs to happen before we start getting into the corpsing process. Now, if you recall, when we pulled this guy last video, um, I didn't really talk about stray foam or scoring or carving. Um, that is for this video. So. Again, once you take this guy from the mold, you're gonna discover most times or not, just like in a latex mask or a pool, you've gotta trim up and clean up areas of, of old latex, or in this case, old foam that you don't need or you don't want, right? So biggest areas of concern when you do a, uh, a skull pull sometimes is right around the teeth area. Yeah, you'll notice those teeth are just kind of conglomerated together. You know, it doesn't look very realistic to me sometimes. Um, so what I need to go in there and do is get an exacto knife right I'll go in just like I mentioned last time I score each individual tooth I pretty much work around every tooth all around the gum line I want to clean up all the excess foam break apart any pieces that might have stuck during the pull that didn't come out correctly um, so basically you're just a you know you're just doing a little bit of artistry a little bit of dentistry here and then I took my clay sculpting tool now this is the tool I used last time it's just got that beveled spoon head that I like to use. And what I use this for is once I've already scored those teeth, um, I go up into each individual tooth right up in the top and I push up into the gum line. And what this does is it causes that tooth to look like it's an actual tooth coming out of the jaw line from, from the upper jaw. Um, and all it does is give that more of a sense of realism um, because once we go to set the stain or ink or whatever we choose to use, we're gonna blacken all that out. You want all that ink or stain to go into the recesses of those cracks that you scored to give it that deep, deep base coat. And that's what's gonna bring those teeth out once we go to highlight them. Um, you know, and, and again, I'll take the flat black, I'll spray over the entire piece, but spray paint's not gonna get into all those little cracks. So you really need to dip that with that ink or stain and let that stuff just soak in there and get all the way to the bottom. That's why it's key to get in here and get as deep as you can uh, you know, and like I said, make these teeth look as real as possible. You know, again, if you want to come up on the nose line or the ridge line, any bone line that's going to show through the latex or cotton, that's fine. But don't go crazy because, again, like I said, you're not going to see most of this. It's going to be covered up. So with that, let's get everything laid out. We're going to go ahead and start the pre-skinning process. Um, this is going to be layer one, so I'm just going to do a time lapse. Again, this is going to go pretty quick. Um, at the end, we're going to apply the hair. That's going to be really the only key difference between this video and the, and the video for the skull cross. But nevertheless, it's pretty much the same steps. So here we go.
Okay, so that's the first pass of latex. Again, we wanna hit the entire piece, just one thin layer. This is just that preliminary coat. And you know, once you hit it with a heat gun, you, you'll know it's dry because it's not tacky. It's not sticking to your fingers anymore. And, and that's what you want. So on the second pass of latex, we're gonna actually cover the teeth this time. Uh, for those of you who recall, what I said was that when we apply latex to the teeth, we're gonna end up rolling that latex up once it's dry between the next two layers here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make that look like that really, you know, that residual loose skin that's coming over the gum line here. So with this one, let's go ahead and apply another thin layer. Let's hit the teeth this time, and here we go. Okay, so we've gone over the second pass of latex with this guy already. Again, I hit the teeth, as y'all saw, right? And as I'm drying this, you'll notice that I'm kind of tapping it. And what I'm doing there is to check to see, to checking to see if it's tacky or not, right? Obviously, if it comes off on your fingers, you want to keep still hitting it over. Uh, but for the most part, this guy is, is pretty dry. So um, on the teeth here, if you'll notice when you're looking at this guy, you can see the latex has gone between the cracks now. So... You just get your finger and just ever so gently just roll that up. All right, and you'll notice that it's kind of starting to look pretty cool. It's kind of probably hard to see on camera here, but just trust me. Know that when you start to roll it up, it'll roll up just like bubble gum. And that's exactly what you want. And you'll notice that it's starting to get up on that ridge line there, which is excellent. So we're going to do the third and final pass. Uh, again, remember to hit all that all that dry area down there as well. Go over it again with another pass. Uh, we're gonna blow dry it again. And once we get to that point and we're done, we're gonna start painting this guy or getting the base layer of color on him anyway. So after the final and third pass here, uh, you may have taken note that I stopped. I went in and added some more latex to the teeth, the upper and lower jaw areas, um, hit it with a heat gun, and then proceeded to roll it back like I did the first time. Um, reason being is because, you know, whenever I see a zombie, um, I don't know about y'all, but whenever I happen to see a zombie, whether it's in a movie, in a magazine, on the internet, they've always got something funky going on in this area, right? This is kind of the area of action. They've always got some kind of skin hanging, whether the jaw's cracked, twisted, um, that's just the area of interest to me. Um, so that's probably why I spend so much time trying to get this portion correct. Um, you know, because this, this area here, I mean, it, it's, it's important and all, but this is where all the action's happening. This is the part that's moving. This is the part that's screaming and moaning. Um, so that's why I just pay a little bit extra attention to that. But um, with that, you know, the next step for me is to give this guy a work over of flat black. Uh, you know, I'll start with the eye sockets, nasal cavity, inner mouth area, not too concerned with the teeth right now. Um, I'm gonna kind of save that for the last on detailing because I really need to see how the rest of this comes together before I decide on, on what kind of detail I'm gonna add to the teeth. Because remember, I'm gonna add extra skin, so I really don't wanna spend too much attention to these just yet until I have get that skin built up around them and I know what I'm working with. So let me take this guy outside. Let me bring him to life with some depth of color and we'll come back and then we'll get started on the next step after that. Okay, so after taking this guy outside, giving him the work over with the black spray paint like I mentioned, this is what you should end up with, something like this. And you're probably thinking, holy hell, that doesn't even look like the same skull. Well, actually, you know, you're right. But you know, guys, it's, it's only spray paint. This isn't some high-tech airbrush project. I mean, honestly, this took literally less than two minutes to do. Um, again, you hit the eye sockets, hit the nose, hit the mouth. You wanna just give him a general frosting of, of where shadows would naturally occur. Not imperative to get this correct right off the bat because again, we're gonna go over this with more latex. We're gonna hit it with cotton. So a lot of the detail in the painting that we just did is gonna be hidden, but I still like to get those general areas, you know, the foundations laid, the colors set because there are gonna be some areas that are transparent. So you want those colors to seep through. Um, but again, nothing major, you know, and, and it does take a little bit of time. I mean, if you're not familiar with using the can spray paint, you know, I can tell you, now that I see a lot of people that just take this and they'll just go and they just stay on that area. All right? Well, what happens when you use spray paint? Spray paint bleeds. It's like a shotgun. It just hits a wide area. So if you continue to stay there, 
you're gonna deaden that whole piece, it's gonna drip, it's gonna look ugly. So honestly, you know, you, you wanna treat this like you would an airbrush. You just wanna go, you wanna spot check. You don't wanna just keep spraying in one continual area. You need to hit the saying like it's a like it's an airbrush, but it's not, but you know, that's what you wanna do. So, and, and that's how you end up with this. You know, I, I've seen guys that can use spray paint better than airbrushes. It's amazing what they can do with cans. Um, but that, that's really all you need to do. So with that, let's set this guy down. We're gonna prep out some cotton balls. Um, we're gonna go over just a few tips and tricks of, of what we're gonna be doing here and, and how to actually get this next skin texture. So when it comes to applying skin or, or coming up with a skin texture, you know, there's a ton of different methods out there. You know, and as I mentioned earlier, some people like to use paper towels where they dab it in glue, soak it, whether it's newspaper, which is actually paper mache, but I've seen people go in with newspaper um, and glue or, you know, or cotton and glue and, and just apply it liberally everywhere. But one thing I do notice is these guys take forever when they do this. This process will take them hours, if not a couple of days, working on one piece just to get a skin texture going. You know, and, and that's when I came across the mask latex. I was like, well, hell, you know, this works 10 times faster because mask latex dries, you know, depending on the temperature of the room, I mean, it dries within a matter of, of minutes to an hour. You know, and again, if you're using the heat gun to speed up the process, even faster because, you know, we're not making some thick mask here. All we're doing is applying a thin layer, which dries like that once you hit it with the heat gun. Um, but in this instance, I got away from the paper towels. I got away from the glue. Um, you know, and what I discovered was using the cotton, some people like to actually unroll this. They'll apply it across the skull. They'll brush it on. And, and I'm not going for that kind of look. I'm not trying to build up forms. Uh, you know, if that's what you're trying to do, that, that, that's great. You know, you can go under the, under the eye socket line. You can build up with, with latex and cotton, paint it. But it takes a little bit of dry time. Um, but for these guys, what I like to do is just spot check it every area with spray adhesive. And I was going to shake it first. You know, let's start with the forehead. You know, that, that's all it takes. It doesn't take a whole lot. Get you a cotton ball. We just want to start to dab, right? And you'll notice that as you're dabbing, and don't dab too long because it, you'll get more that sticks than you want to. Just kind of dab lightly. And you'll notice it starts to leave trace amounts of, of cotton behind, right? And so you've got that thin layer of cotton head there. Now, what you want to do is grab another chipping brush, grab some latex, just barely dab, dab, dab. You don't want it really thick. So take off some of that excess. And then you want to just start to dab. You want to dab on top of that cotton that you applied there on the head, All right? You just want to keep going and going and going. Again, I don't like to brush because I'm trying to give this an actual skin texture. If you brush that, you're going to elongate that and it's just going to look kind of funky. It won't even look real. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Now, you're probably asking, well, how, how do you know exactly where to add skin textures to? You know, well, that's really just a matter of, of you being a very observant. Again, I watch a ton of movies, look at a ton of pictures. I, I kinda try to take in like a sponge everything I see and just try to categorize in my head everything that, that I know that I've seen and what to do uh, and what areas that, that I like to apply to. So I, I know right off the bat that I'm gonna want skin to be coming from here, falling down to the bottom of the jawline. Right, so we're gonna work our way around that way, but what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and build up all around these areas of the bone line. Again, I don't wanna cover every single area because I do want some skull to be looking through this. So take your gun, if you can. Spray the just the general area here. Take your cotton. Now, I typically like to go around the, no the ridge of the nose, right up above the actual cheek area. All right? You're gonna take your latex again, dab, dab, wipe off the excess, and then start dabbing. All right? Take a little bit, start dabbing. And you're gonna notice as you're doing this, that it's not really, like I said, it's not really brushing the cotton on there because you don't want to flatten this against the skull. You want some of this to actually come off like it's a little hairy skin. So 
So as you can see, we're starting to give that a real thin skin base layer. And we're gonna do that. We're gonna work over this whole head before we even start to getting to the point where we need to actually start installing skin strands because that's the last thing you wanna do. And you know, actually you don't have to include cotton everywhere. You can just start dabbing additional spot checks of latex because once we hit it with the heat gun, that latex is gonna to start to harden in certain spots and it's gonna become callous looking and it's gonna look like, you know, skin chunks itself. Hit it with some more latex, bottom, bottom of the jaw area. And then we just wanna keep dabbing. Keep dabbing everywhere you see here. Okay. Gonna go to the dab method again. The latex in your chipping brush. And again, once we hit it with the uh, with the heat gun to these layers of latex that we're applying, we're gonna go back in and we're gonna throw another few coats of black paint on there just to kind of go over this stuff that we've already added here. And again, we're gonna be building and building layers. So you want to make sure that you're frosting latex to cotton to paint, latex to cotton to paint. Um, but again, you don't want to deaden everything because you can kill this whole thing of layers that you've just done by just staying on there with the spray can, spray paint can. So what we're doing here, as I mentioned, we're just, we're just giving this whole thing a base layer of skin, a little bit of extra texture and depth. Okay, so let's hit that with the heat gun. I'm only spot checking, I can do this right here. Get that flat black. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh in those eye socket areas. Mouth, back of the temples. Go ahead and just do a quick over of the spots that you painted in latex. Okay. Can't really tell there uh, in the video that I'm seeing here in front of you, but you know I, I know that there's some skin texture going on here. So we're going to continue to do this. It's probably going to take about four or five layers of processing to, to get where we want to be with this guy. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I like to use cheesecloth uh, in addition to the latex, and that's what'll be the straps of skin that I have coming from the jawbone down to the lower jaw, and that's going to bring this whole piece together here. Uh, so I'm gonna do a time lapse. I'm gonna go ahead and start dabbing, dabbing, and creating some more skin effects. Uh, and then when we're done, I'm gonna do a close up, and I'll try to hopefully get you to see what it is that I'm trying to create here with that skin effect texture. Okay, so nothing super crazy yet, but you know, what you can see that I did was I went in and as I was drying this and I actually started rolling that skin back. Um, because remember I said I'd like to actually see some of that skull protruding from the skin effects. Um, so when we go to add more, those are gonna be key points um, that you're gonna wanna have in, in the piece when you're creating it. So I mentioned cheesecloth or creepy cloth earlier. That's what I'm gonna use to connect the jawline or the upper socket 
bed down to the bottom jawline on both sides. It just kind of gives it a screaming effect, kind of gives it a real crypty vibe. Um, and so that's what I'll do here. Um, again, you know, you pick up any kind of creepy cloth or cheesecloth from your fabric store. Um, I recommend hitting the dollar stores around Halloween time. Uh, dollar General, uh, you know, the dollar store. You know, I usually wipe those places out at Halloween time. I think this past year I bought 52 packages from one store. Uh, but again, so cut you some little shreds. And what I like to do is just kind of loosely dress it so I can see how it's going to look. And again, this is going to be duplicated on both sides. So as you can see, we're going to have that draping out of the eye socket. And you want it long enough to come down to the bottom portion of the jaw. And like I said, we're going to do that on both sides. So once you get that, you want to hit this with some 3M spray, the adhesive spray on both sides. Apply it. We're going to go over it with latex and brush it in. And at that point, once we hit it with a heat gun, we're going to start blending those pieces in with cotton. So let me give you an idea of what we're going to do here. Take that spray. Just go ahead and spray the side of the face. Lay that down, and then you want to take this guy, like we just showed you. I socket, it, just go ahead and press him on, and drag it all the way down. So, what you're left with is something like that, okay? So, let's go ahead and cut another piece. We're going to time lapse it. I'm going to get it adhered. We're going to go over it with latex, and then we'll see where we're at at that point. All right, so what you can see is happening now, since we added the uh, creepy cloth, I went in, if you noticed, I applied the creepy cloth. Once I was done adding some latex to it, I came back in with some cotton, dabbed it in there, and the whole purpose of that was to kind of blend this together because we had loose skin up here already, so we wanted to kind of just mesh it all together. Um, even though it is creepy cloth, up close, it has a really cool sense of texture. Um, you know, and what'll happen with these guys is we're gonna leave these hanging because those are gonna be like loose pieces of flesh. Once we're done, once all the hair is added, it's gonna look really kick-ass. We're gonna add the eyes. This thing is gonna to look totally different than the way we started off with. Uh, for now, we won't paint or do anything with these because what actually is gonna happen, uh, once it's all said and done, I'm gonna get some latex and I will lightly brush over all of this just to give it a sense of hardness and skin texture. Um, but again, it'll look pretty cool. Uh, we can go in at this point now, and we're going to go ahead and start to darken out those teeth. I'm going to go ahead and score up a little bit more, um, get through the latex that's left over that I wasn't able to roll up completely, just to make sure it's all out of the way. Same thing on the bottom. Uh, you know, once I'm done with that, we're going to get the stain, we're going to get a fine brush, we're going to go all into those crevices. Once that's done, we're going to get some more stain, we're going to go up all into these gum ridges and gum lines, and get into where all that meat of that skin really is and that's going to make this start to pop out so let me set this guy down and get our tools ready and let's get ready to paint y'all so when it comes to fine lining these guys teeth out uh you know you can pretty much use any kind of cheap paint brushes that you get from five and below you know the dark store or whatever um because i paint a lot you know i i have these super fine really super thin paint brushes that allow me to get into those those crevices um, again I'm, I'm just a detail freak so it's just kind of the way i roll when it comes to paint brushes uh, but again you can use whatever but uh, you know to really get in there you, you really need something that's got a really fine tip uh, so again we're going to take the stain i'm going to dip it in there and i'm going to start to go into all those little cracks uh, again this is where that artistry comes from that i keep talking about uh, you know, I, I just, you got to get in there. You got to take the time. Uh, you know, is, is this really important in the big scheme of things? Probably not. I mean, it, it's just a prop, right? Uh, for me, these are more displays. Um, I, I don't really think of my stuff anymore as props uh, as more than I do displays. So 
for me, it, it's got that extra element. I want it to look as real as possible. I mean, it's got my name on it. So, you know, obviously uh, I want it to look as best as it can. Um, you know, so I, I kind of do that in everything I do. Down from my drawings, uh, down to these guys, you know, I, I just want every bit of realism that I can get into these guys to be there. Uh, so let's just keep getting this ink or the stain. I'm sorry, we're going to go into all the cracks of the teeth. And, and again, what I said we're trying to do is we're trying to get embedded into all the cracks that we scored. Uh, you know, you want those dark recesses. You don't want any foam color showing through because that's just going to kill the realism in these parts. All right, so let me just go through all these real quick here. Um, you know, it doesn't take long. I said, just get this brush and you're basically just outlining all those cracks and crevices and, and you know, and the, the stain will do its, its job. It'll just fall into place on its own. Okay, we're almost there. So what I do here is once I go through all the uh, individual teeth, then I'll start to move into the actual uh, gummy areas of the teeth, that, of the skin that we rolled back on. So, uh, kind of try to leave the teeth white a little bit um, because what we're going to end up doing is going over this with a polyurethane. And what that's going to do is give it that wet, glossy look. So we want that polyurethane to dilute some of that stain and start to drag over the teeth. So it'll give it a really cool effect. Um, but once you get into all the gummy areas of the skin that you rolled up, you want to start hitting areas kind of around the face, uh, you know, areas of recess and darkness that, that are kind of hidden. You want to get up in there with the stain and, and kind of just start to colorize all that. All the way up into the eye areas. Like I said, there is no right or wrong way to do this, but you can overdo it. Uh, so I, I caution against just throwing stain everywhere. What you want to do is, is, like I said, go around the areas that stand out where it looks like there would be normal crevices. Kind of just spot check those with some stain just a little bit. And, and then once you get to that point, you know, step away from it, look back and see, you know, did I overdo it? Did I not do too much in some areas or, or too much in some areas in, in this case? Um, you know, and that, that's really the only way that you're going to be able to tell whether or not it's coming along the way you want it to or not. Um, for my taste here, I, I think he's starting to look pretty cool. Um, so you can see how, you know, by darkening some of that area, how his teeth are just popping out now as before, it looked like it was just all one piece because of the color. So we're going to set that down for a second. Um, what I'm going to do... I'm gonna go ahead and grab some black ink. Uh, I know I said a GG stain here, but I think the black in this case will really help set some of those colors farther back in. So let me grab that real quick. We're gonna go in and we're gonna apply up in the upper gum areas as well with black on top of that brown, and, and I think it'll look pretty cool. Okay, so in case you're wondering, um, any kind of ink, India ink, or in this case, airbrush ink works really well. So just shake it up really good open it up and we're gonna just dab a little and again what I'm gonna use this black for is to really get up into that gum line up there um, because you know the the stain is oil based and this ink is water based um, so depending on the foam and how it cures you may find that one sticks better than the other and which is sometimes why I like to use both of them right because where the water doesn't stick the oil will but it's always a good color combination uh, just to get that black in there with that dark brown and let them just start combining on their own. Occasionally, sometimes, I'll go in there and I'll even add some kind of green uh, just to mix it up with the brown and the black, you know. And I'm going to go ahead and go back into those same crevices with the teeth just to give that an extra sense of darkness. And again, when I'm done with everything here, I will take a couple of photo shots and I'll post them so you can actually see the, the detail. Detail's kind of hard to get in video. Uh, my lighting is not the greatest here. Still having 
to fight through getting the right lighting techniques over here. Okay, all right, so once that's done, and we've got this guy starting to look pretty grimy, what I like to do sometimes is get a cotton ball, dip it in that stain, dab off the excess, and then we wanna go up and around the back of his temple areas, and just start to bring some of that color out. And then you can lightly dab around the cheek areas. Like I said, you don't want to overdo it because you don't want to just flat dead and everything black to brown. You still want some of those creamy highlights from the latex and the, and the skin that we created to come through. You know, if you blacken the whole piece out, it's going to be kind of difficult to tell what's what. Okay. Now, you may ask or ask me, why, why aren't you doing anything to the top? Well, don't forget, we're gonna add hair to this guy, so it's really not important that I do really anything to the top of this other than those initial layers of uh, latex that we added um, because we're gonna use hot glue, we're gonna use spray adhesive <clears throat> to attach that hair to here. So really all we're focusing with is that frontal face area. Okay, so let's just stretch this guy out for demo purposes. So, I think in this video, you can probably see that he's starting to look pretty cool. So you gotta go past this, imagine him with some glass eyes in here, he's gonna be a really knockout guy. Um, so let's stop right here for a second. I'm gonna pick up a few more items. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna start to get the hair ready, prep the head. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and blacken these out. Probably go ahead and dab a little of latex on there and get him finished out to that point down there. When it comes to adding glass eyes to these guys, what I pretty much use is, is glass beads. Now you can find these at any craft store, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, whatever you may have in your area if you're not here locally. Um, but these are nothing more than just glass beads, right? So what I'll do is I'll get the hot glue gun going. We're going to put a dab of glue inside each eyeball. We're gonna place a glass eye in each eyeball. Once that sets, we're gonna hit it with black spray paint, flatten it out black, and then we're gonna let that sit and then we're not gonna come back to that until we're done to polyurethane and everything else. Because with the polyurethane, it's gonna make those really glossy, make them stand out. It's gonna look really cool. So let's go ahead and get this guy ready. I think I wanna go ahead and, and start to blacken these out uh, while the glue gun's heating up. So let me do that really quickly. Again, we don't have to completely dead and black, but I just want to want to dirty them up to match the rest of the skull. Okay. So we are almost done here. Okay, so we've kind of blended that. These hanging straps are kind of the same color tone as his head. And we will latex that once we get done with the eyes here because I'll need to support that up, let that dry. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this guy upside down. Yeah, be careful when you do this because you know as well as I do that glue is extremely hot. I burnt my hands, I don't know how many times doing these kind of guys. Okay, so you wanna drop a good bead of glue in there because you want those eyes to be able to catch. <clears throat> All right, get one of these. We're gonna seat it right in there. There's one. Get that second eyeball. Place it in there as well. And you want to set that quickly because that glue will, will dry pretty fast in there. Okay. All right. So what we got now are the eyes. Now you can see that looks pretty damn creepy already. <clears throat> but again, once we're done, completely done, we're going to hit that with flat black, deaden that area out, and then come back with polyurethane. Once that's done, I get a single dot of neon yellow put in each eyeball. All right, so let's set that guy there. Okay, so what we're gonna do next, set the glue gun to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, latex brush here. 
we're gonna go ahead and grab these straps and go ahead and just you know just dab lightly some latex we're not trying to coat the whole thing we're just trying to get this to uh, you know like I said be part of the skin element of the of the skull here once that's done go ahead and just hit it with the heat gun as well just enough to dry it really doesn't take much because we're not applying a whole lot there grab the other side and we're gonna do the same thing grab the straps just kind of lightly brush some latex up on it That with the heat gun. Okay. All right. And once that's completely dry, <clears throat> we can get some scissors. Sorry, not on that camera. We can get some scissors and we can kind of shred this up so it look like loose pieces of skin just hanging there. A little bit more. Okay. them over just a little bit more with a flat black kind of blend anything left over that I've got hanging out standing there all right I'm gonna see if I can move this camera up just here So you can see that our skull guy's coming along. He's got the eyes, he's got the teeth, he's got the gumminess going on around his mouth, he's got some hanging skin straps on the side of his cheeks. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the hair. Now, before I do the hair, I know I've got a lot of questions about, you know, do you punch it? Do you glue it? Uh, you know, punching takes forever. And if you're not familiar with that process, Again, that's another story for another time. That, that's extremely difficult, extremely time consuming. It does look real, but you know, for these guys, we're not trying to get that into it. So, but I will take the hair, um, like I mentioned, that we get from any kind of beauty supply store. And depending on the length of the hair you want, I like my guys to have kind of long hair. Um, it just, it's just more dramatic to me. You know, if you get anything too short, it just looks kind of weird. It's just not the look I'm going for. Um, so what I will do is kind of dry fit the head with just the length of hair, just to just to see how it's going to fall, right? You know, you may want a female zombie, you may want a zombie that's been in the crypt for years and eons, but you know, to me that that kind of has a very cool look to it, especially when we go in and we're going to frost that, hit it with some glue. I mean, it does all kinds of crazy things once you treat it. So I think that's the look we're gonna go for. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab two lengths of that strand of hair. Okay, now this gets a little bit messy. So, you know, this, this kind of fabricated hair just tends to go everywhere. So just kind of smooth out your, your tail that you're gonna use. Once you got it, you want to trim that at the very top. Okay, put that to the side for just a second. And I tend to work one side and, and then keep working around. <clears throat> so when I do my hair, I like to start from the base. Kind of like if you had, you know, horseshoe style hair because this guy's going to be an older bald guy. So I don't want a whole lot of hair at the top. I kind of want to just hang it from the sides where his forehead is going to show. And then we'll tap in some hair just back over here to hide that back area. 
So in order to accomplish this, you get that 3M spray. Now, this is gonna get a little messy, a little tacky. Um, I got a couple different methods that I do for this. So the first thing is gonna be to hit it with some spray adhesive. I'm gonna take a few strands of hair. I'm gonna get it and spread it around. And then once I get that area worked in, I'll grab some latex and I'll start patching it. I, I call it hot patching. I'll hot patch that in over the hair that's been glued down to help keep it down because that glue, the hair is going to want to pull off. And then you hit it with that heat gun just ever so gently because that heat will shrink that hair in an instant if, you're, if you stay on it too long. So let me show you exactly what we're going to do here. The glue. You know, and put a decent amount because you want that stuff to stick. Okay, grab you just a section of this hair. And where you apply that glue, just kind of loosely drag it. Try not to get your fingers into that glue. Just kind of lightly pat it down. Work it all the way around. Okay, and once you got it to that point, go ahead and hit it again with glue on top. All right, and don't touch it at this point. Let that glue just sit on top of it. Grab your latex, and then you wanna start going to the tops, top of the hair that you just applied. Only the top, no, don't drag it all over. Okay, because what we're trying to do is create a, a point of, of uh, of stick right here. Okay, once we've got that, we've got latex on the skull down to just maybe half an inch of the hairline that we've applied. Leave it, get your heat gun out, and go on a low setting. Because all we're trying to do is just cure that latex enough to where it keeps the hair down and doesn't come off anymore. And again, you want to go back and forth quickly. You don't want to stay on the hair too long because it'll start to burn the hair and shrink it. Okay. So... You wanna to start to go ahead and work your hair down, start moving it around while you still can because that glue and the latex have not completely set just yet. So you're able to move it around slightly. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, currently we have one side of hair down. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing to the opposite side. Oops, excuse me. Okay, same thing to the opposite side, and then we're gonna work our way around to the back so that the hair is completely covering the back end here. So let's get some more spray on this side. Remember, we're working our way around in a horseshoe. Okay. Grab you another strand of hair, or section of hair. We want to do the same thing. We just want to loosely slide it around the head where the glue is. Try not to get the glue on your fingers because that hair will just attach to you and it'll pull right off. Okay, once you got it laid down, do what? Hit it again with the glue. And all that's doing is just seating that hair back down that you just applied. Grab you some latex and just start dabbing or hot patching from the skull down to a little bit of the hair. Because again, all you're trying to do is give that hair a more secure connection point to the skull um, because that glue will eventually dry and the hair would probably come off. So you really want this latex to act more as an adhesive Okay, go ahead and get your heat gun on low setting. Wave it around, kind of guide the heat with your hand. Alright, so 
So let's pick this boy up. All right, start to guide that hair around. Um, when I say guide, I mean just kind of move it to the front um, while, while it's still pliable. Okay. All right, so as you can see, we've got hair hanging on both sides, okay? We don't have anything on top because that's his bald forehead. We're gonna turn this guy around and this spot back here is all we're missing, so let's go ahead and do the same process. Glue, hair, glue, latex. Okay, grab that hair. And we're gonna apply to the back. Like I say, you don't need a whole lot um, because this guy is dead, but we also wanna make it should look as real as possible. All right, get that glue. And then we're gonna hot patch with latex. Again, we're working on the back of the head now. Now, once we are done applying the hair, um, what I will do is, once this is all dry back here, we're going to get late, or I'm sorry, we're gonna get cotton balls and we're going to spray adhesive again. We're gonna dab with cotton and that's gonna blend the hair to the head. So it looks kind of seamless. You won't see this hot patch of latex and hair. All right, so let me get the heat gun. Let's dry the back of his head. Remember not to stay on one spot too long because you will burn that hair. All right. So, I think he's pretty dry. He's no longer tacky. And we are now able to kind of play with his hair. Pull those neck straps down. Okay, he's looking pretty cool so far. Okay, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do at this point, Let's go ahead and hit his whole head with some spray adhesive. We're gonna take a cotton ball and we're just gonna kind of blend these spots in that you see here. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Get your cotton ball and then we're gonna dab, like I said, just in the spots where the hair is meeting up with that skull so it looks like skin is seamlessly blending in. Okay, and get some latex. Not a whole lot, just enough to, to wet in the, the cotton pieces there. And then once the step is done, he's all dried, we're gonna hit it with the black paint again, right? We're gonna deaden his hair, we're gonna make it look more of a grayish white. And at that point, all this is gonna be seamless. Or, you know, if you want, if you want him to have the blondish hair, that, that's fine too but you could still hit this with just a little bit of color up here. You know, because you've got this black face and then you've got this white head, so you wanna kinda of blend that in. Okay, so I think that looks good. So let me get the, blow, the uh, heat gun. Again, on low setting. Let's get all that latex dried up so that we can work with it. Okay, really doesn't take that long, so. All right, let's move his hair. Start to position that. Okay. So, as you can see, we're having a real quipped, uh, quipped crypt dweller being born here. Sorry, guys. 
All right, so once we got that, I'm gonna take the flat black paint once again, like I mentioned, and I'm going to work my way from the top of his head back. Again, just like an airbrush, you don't wanna concentrate on one spot too much. You're just trying to frost this, blend it in. And then go down on his hair. Just ever so slightly. some of this mess out of the way here. Okay. So, as you can see, this guy is coming together pretty nicely. Uh, you know, I'm not sure how great he looks in the video that you're watching, but here in person, he, he's looking pretty damn cool. Okay, so next step for me at this point I've got his hair on, I've got it blended, I've got the color right. Um, I want to go in and I want to flat black these eyes out. Yeah, and some people may like him glassy, and that's fine. But, you know, I like everything black because I said, like I said before, I'm going to go in, I'm going to put some polyurethane, gloss everything out, and put those yellow dots in there. see he's got that dead black stare now right now that gloss will go away here in a second because it's flat black but you get the idea of where I'm going all right so when you get to the end of this guy and you're ready to apply the polyurethane I like to go with a water-based polyurethane I uh, used to use the oil base decided not to anymore only because it it's tacky it takes forever to dry even with a heat gun I mean it just seemed to take days before it was ready to go um, with this stuff here, this stuff dries pretty much within an hour to two at the most. Um, so another cool thing about it is when you apply it, it goes on kind of a whitish blue, right? That lets you know that it's still wet, but when it cures, it cures completely clear. Uh, so when you take this stuff, what I like to do, just grab another chipping brush, or you can use a thinner paint brush, whichever you'd like. Um, dab a little bit on here. The areas I like to start off with first are the teeth and the gum lines. Uh, kind of dab it in there and then you can kind of just brush it down pull it down on the teeth and that's the areas that we're going to concentrate on first and again just like the stain you don't want to overdo it because if you wet the whole thing it just it kind of looks weird you really only want to wet the spots out where it would naturally occur which is going to be in the mouth area under the eyes maybe in the eyes um, coming out of the nasal cavity. So we'll get up all up in here. And like I said, I am going to go over those eyeballs in there. Because I want those things to look like they're wet when they cure. Because, I, you know, a zombie's eyes are wet because they're all bloody. Okay. Now, also, I'll drag some down the, uh, the skin straps that we built all the way down to the side straps there. <clears throat> all right. And that's probably about all we need right here. So let me hit this with the heat gun just a little bit. Again, pay extra attention not to hit the hair because you will burn it and it'll shrink up on you. So just kind of guide it with your hand.
Normally I'd have a stand for these guys to sit on while they're drying. Um, but I got rid of that last year because I just accidentally threw it away. Okay. Let's set him right here. So that is pretty much the completed head. We've got the hair, we've got the glass eyes, we've got the latex around the teeth, we gummed the teeth up, got those teeth stained and painted out, added the, the uh, side skin straps. And what all is gonna be left to do at this point is to attach the neck piece, which is actually a PVC piece um, that we're going to construct on the next video. Uh, and then we will actually apply that on the video after to show you how that puts together because what's going to happen is once we attach that piece to the back of the head we're going to build off that head with painters plastic we're going to actually make it look meaty like a neck and it's going to attach to the pvc frame body that we're going to build so that is it guys i hope you're happy with him again everybody's work is everybody's work it's going to come out different it's not going to look exactly like this every work is evolving it's ever changing, so don't ever think that you're doing it wrong because you're not. It's just the nature of the work. It's how it takes on its own form and its own life. So, hope you've enjoyed it. Ready to see you on the next one. Have a great night, y'all.